Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, we're gonna talk about my reading plans for July. My TBR for July is going to be a mix of things that are getting pulled over from my June TBR because I was pretty slumpy early on in the month. I did not get to everything I had intended to read in June and so some of this is going to be stuff that you're going to have seen from last month but I do also have some new things being added on so we will see how the month goes. We'll, we'll we'll see what happens. But first up is the book for my Patreon book club. Every month my patrons get to vote on a book that we read and talk about together and the genre shifts. For July we're reading a thriller and the book that they voted on was White Ivy by Susie Yang. This is a debut thriller that's kind of a fish out of water scenario. It follows a girl from a poor family who ends up going to an elite school and it's a book about her dark obsession with her privileged classmates and and the lengths she's willing to go to to win the love of the man that she wants. So that's going to be an interesting one. We'll be discussing it together at the end of the month. Then every month some of my higher tier patrons get to pick and vote on a book that they want to see me do a vlog for. For July the book that they chose was Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Kimmerer, which I've heard really great things about and I am looking forward to reading it. This is a nonfiction title by an indigenous author. I don't know a ton about it except that it's some what about plants but everybody seems to love it so I'm going to be reading that. Then I've got a few books that I'm going to be reading for read-alongs. Continuing with our 2022 sort of truth series read-along, Leanna and I are going to be reading The Pillars of Creation by Terry Goodkind. We're going to be back over on my channel for July to discuss this book. Uh, I don't know that this is one of the better ones in the series, but we'll see how it goes. We'll be here talking about it at the end of the month. Then for Chapter 3 podcast, I actually have two read-alongs happening for July. First up, Leanna and I are continuing on with our first law read-along, and in July we're going to be talking about Red Country and Sharp Ends, which is a short story collection. We're going to be taking August off, but we're going to finish up the first law standalones and the short story collection. Red Country is Abercrombie's take on a Western, which should be interesting. It's Leanna's least favorite, but I'm kind of excited because sometimes I really like Westerns. So we'll see how these go. Look forward to that. And then with my other co-host, Izzy from Happy For Now, we're going to be starting a read-along for Sarah McLean's latest series. So in July, I'm going to be reading Bombshell, which is the first in her newest historical romance series. The episode for this isn't going up until August, but we're going to try to get it recorded early because we both have travel plans for later in the summer. That should be fun. We'll be putting up that episode in August, and then in September we'll be talking about the book that is coming out in August. Heartbreaker, I think, is book two. So that should be fun. Hey guys, editing Bethany here. I realized I forgot a book. We have our July Blades and Bodice Strippers book club happening over on Mars channel. We're going quarterly this year and the pick is going to be an interesting one. It is Morning Glory Milking Farm, which is an erotica, the first erotica that we've read for book club. It's on Kindle Unlimited, so I think I'll probably get it that way. Should be interesting. It's about a girl who works at a minotaur milking farm but you know it's not actually milk people say that d that despite the erotic nature of it it's a surprisingly sweet romance so we will see how it goes and uh if nothing else it should make for an interesting discussion so that is also going on my tbr then i basically have a bunch of books that i need to get to for review some of which as i said i was intending to get to in june and didn't. The books that I'm rolling over from June are A Half-Built Garden by Ruthanna Emrys. This is a first contact story meets climate fiction and the writing is being compared to Ursula K. Le Guin so I'm very much looking forward to this. I love the cover. Want to read that. I've also got Up Against It by Laura J. Mixon which is a sci-fi noir kind of crime story that is a modern classic published in the Tor Essentials line. The Book of Gothel by Mary McMine, which is a backstory of Mother Gothel, the villain in the Rapunzel story. Um, and I think this is all, this is like historical fantasy. So excited for that. The Bruising of Kilwa by Nassim Jamnia, which is a debut fantasy about a non-binary refugee practitioner of blood magic, discovering a strange disease that caused political rifts in their new homeland. 
This is by a Persian American author and I do want to read it but I didn't get to it in June. And then the last physical thing getting transferred over from my June TBR is Teen Killers in Love by Lily Sparks which I think should be really fun. This is the sequel to Teen Killers Club. It's coming out in August. The first one was really fun and campy and I feel like this one will be great as well. So those are the books getting rolled over that will be my first priority for June. I guess the one ebook I'm pushing over that I've only just barely started is The Daughter of Dr. Moreau by Sylvia Moreno Garcia. I love Sylvia Moreno Garcia so I'm sure this is going to be a hit for me but I don't think I'm going to finish it by the end of the month. Then I've got three new physical books to add to my TBR that I'm hoping to read in July. We have The Many Daughters of Afong Moy by Jamie Ford. This sounds really interesting to me even though it's a little outside of my typical wheelhouse. It's part historical fiction, part Part family saga, but it's all based on this concept of epigenetic memory, the idea that within our DNA we contain the memories and trauma of our ancestors, which I'm really fascinated by, so I wanted to pick this up. It's like a literary historical fiction. I've also got Green Woad book one by J. Tulos Hennig. This is a reprint of a book that came out a while ago. It's the first of two in a series of a queer reimagining of Robin Hood. It sounds interesting. Reviews look pretty good. It's from a small press, so hopefully I enjoy it. We'll see how it goes. And then the last physical arc is In the Shadow of Lightning by Brian McClellan. I have never read from Brian McClellan and I've been wanting to and this seemed like a good opportunity. It's the start of a new fantasy series that sounded interesting. Magic is a finite resource and it is running out. It follows an exile who was a failure as a general, a leader, and a son, but when his own mother is brutally murdered, he must return to take his seat as the head of the family. Because she was killed for a secret, a secret so large it threatens the social order, the future of the empire, and the fate of the world. The magic is running out, and no one knows how to stop it. Um, so yeah, hopefully that'll be fun. I'm excited to try Brian McClellan and see how I get on with him. In addition to that, I do have some e-arcs from NetGalley that I am hoping to get to. Like, will I get to all of these in July? Probably not. Is that fine? Yeah, it's, it's cool. I'll, I'll do what I can. So we've got Sea Tong Girls by Charlene Thomas coming out in August. It's a YA contemporary novel. It's supposed to be feminist and intersectional, also dealing with like Black Lives Matter type stuff. I don't remember the details of it, honestly. I've got Love on the Brain by Ali Hazelwood, which is her latest contemporary science-based romance. I've got The Hookup Plan by Farrah Brishon, which is the final book in the trilogy she's been writing of contemporary romances. Hopefully that'll be a good time. I have These Fleeting Shadows by Kate Alice Marshall, which is a YA gothic horror novel, which I love. So uh, in theory, I'm very excited for this. Every Rogue Has His Charm by Susanna Craig, which is a historical in a series that I like, and I don't know anything about <laughs> the book, but I like the series, so I requested it. I've got Aphrodite and the Duke by J.J. Magavoy, which I requested entirely because of the cover. This is another historical romance with a beautiful black woman on the cover, and um, we'll see. Nothing More to Tell by Karen M. McManus which had gothic boarding school vibes. We'll see how it goes. Like, is it gonna deliver on what I'm hoping for? I don't know. We'll, we'll see what she can do. And then lastly, Fury Song by Rosaria Munda, which is the third book in her current fantasy trilogy, which is excellent. Like one of the best YA fantasy trilogies with political fantasy and dragons that I've read in a while. I also have a couple of audio arcs from NetGalley. One of them is called Slaying the Dragon. It's a history of D&D that sounded nerdy and interesting. And then Stay Awake by Megan Golden, which is her latest thriller. I don't even remember what it's about, but I've enjoyed her other two books that I've read, so I'm gonna try this one. So all that to say, will I read all of these things? I don't know. Will I also pick up some other things? Probably, but this at least gives you an idea of the stuff that I'm trying to get to. Again, I do have a lot of books for review that are getting pushed over from last month because with mental health stuff and reading slump, like I just did not get to everything I was hoping to get to, but I'm not doing that badly in terms of actual release dates for the most part. You know, it is what it is. I guess one other one that I would say I might pick up 
but I don't want to officially put it on my TBR is Stealing Infinity by Allison Noel just because it sounds really fun. It was sent to me unsolicited but it sounds interesting. The Da Vinci Code meets Riverdale at the mysterious Grey Wolf Academy where everyone has more secrets than time. I mean I am a sucker for like a magical boarding school thing so we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. There you go. Those are my reading plans for July. We will see how the month goes. I feel like August is going to be so busy because I'm traveling for part of the month and you know I never actually get reading done when I travel with my kids. So it may be a wash, but I will get to as much of this as I can in July. Talk to me in the comments down below. Let me know any of your thoughts or feelings on anything I talked about in this video. And for question of the day, I would love to hear about your reading plans for the summer. Are you going on vacation? Are you going to take any books with you? Anything specific you're hoping to get to? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, it does help if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.